Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. A lot to talk about again this week. Phyrexia All Be One continues to impact a lot of card prices in the secondary market. Remember, too, last weekend was the Pro Tour. A lot of cards moving because of that event as well, and some other surprises, too, in the video today, as always. Per usual, our threshold is $2. We're not going to talk about a card unless it's moving up at least $2 this week. Quickly though, before we get into the prices, a couple things. I do want to say thank you to one of the viewers who gave a super thanks tip for last week's video, and that is Whip. Whip, thank you for the super thanks tip. You've given so many, I really appreciate it. When it comes to these super thanks tips, they're always appreciated, but never expected. If you do want to help the channel that way, that's awesome. But if you just watch the videos, leave us a like, a comment, tell people about us, subscribe, that all helps a ton too. And secondly, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order March of the Machine products there. They have everything you see on the screen, as well as the Commander decks. So you can pre-order those now as well. And they have a whole lot of other things on their website. Remember, if your order's over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the Heroes promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin with the Standard Legal Spotlight. We have some Standard Legal cards moving this week. Let's take a look. First is Toxtral the Corrosive. This is the one from Innistrad Double Feature. It goes up 232 to 2582. This gets a fair amount of play as a commander, but it's also in the 99 of a number of decks there, including Attracts of Praetor's Voice. Those builds have been seeing even more play due to the support they received from Phyrexia all be one Although, remember, Traxa is getting reprinted in the Multiverse Legends subset in March of the Machine. Aside from that, though, Toxtril is in Commander Builds around a new card, too, Venser Corpse Puppet. Next, we have Fable of the Mirror Breaker up 374 this week to 2223. So this sees a lot of play in numerous decks in multiple formats. In Standard, you see this in Grixis Midrange and much more, but Pioneer is the key driver for this card this week. If you watched last weekend's Pro Tour, you saw a lot of this card. It was in full display in the top eight. It was in four decks there. Enigmatic Fires, Rectos Midrange, and two Teamer Indomitable Creativity decks, one of which came in first place, piloted by Reed Duke. Now, you do see this card in other decks in that format as well. In Modern, this is an Indomitable Creativity and more there. Legacy, it's in Painter and other decks in that format too. And this has even been seeing some additional Commander play now in a build around a new card from Phyrexia All Be One, Chisgoria Forge Tyrant. Useju Who Endures. This goes up 393 this week to 3754. Another card you see in lots of decks and lots of formats. In standard, this is in the Kami War builds and more. But again, it's jumping the way it is right now because of Pioneer and the Pro Tour. This was also in four decks in the top eight. Two Lotus Field combo builds, Enigmatic Fires, and the second place Auras deck piloted by Benton Madsen. You do see this card in other builds in the Pioneer format, too. It gets a ton of modern play as well. It's an Amulet Titan, Indomitable Creativity, and much more there. In Legacy, it's in Elves and more. Vintage, you see it in Oath of Druids and Hogak Vine. Plus, it's getting even more Commander play now, thanks to Phyrexia all be one It's in Attracts of Praetor's Voice and Grand Unifier builds. Also, a good upgrade to the Corrupting Influence Commander deck and in fresh builds around Excel Scion of Attraxa from there. And the last card in this section is one of the new ones, Skrelv Defector Might. This is up 436 to $10. Now, this is seeing play in a number of formats. In Standard, it's in Poison Builds, Esper Legends, sometimes Azorius Soldiers, and more. Although, again, surprise, surprise, Pioneer and the Pro Tour are pushing this card this week. You found this one in two decks in the top eight, Mono White Humans and the second place Auras Build. I have also seen some trying this out in a few modern builds. We'll have to see what sticks there. Plus, it's getting a lot of commander play, both as a commander and in the 99 of builds old and new. For example, you see this in Attracts of Praetor's Voice and Grand Unifier builds. And it is a good upgrade to the Corrupting Influence Commander deck, showing up in fresh builds around a couple cards from there too. Ixal Scion of Atraxa and Vishgraz the Doomhive. Additionally, this was mentioned on an episode of the Command Zone podcast this week about Infect, which might have brought some more attention to it as well. And that's going to take us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight, where we look at the Pioneer Legal cards going up the most this week. And you guessed it, a lot of these cards moving because of the Pro Tour. But let's take a look and see what we have. 
Ramaz, King of Oreskos from Born of the Gods. It goes up 209 this week to 1832. This is seeing some additional commander playing builds around Mondrak, Glory Dominus from Phyrexia All Be One. Hallowed Fountain from Dissension goes up to 18 to 33, 19. This original copy is moving up after some recent losses that came when it was reprinted in Infinity. This is a shot glance, so it sees extensive play in Pioneer and Modern. You also see this in many Commander decks, old and new. Mana Confluence from Journey to Nyx. It goes up to 28 this week to 25, 12. This was in the second place Pioneer Auras deck in the Pro Tour last week. It's also in other builds in that format as well. In Modern, you see this in Dredge. It's also in the Commander Attracts the Praetor's Voice and Grand Unifier builds now. And it's seeing more play in that format around the Eternal Legendary Mirror from Phyrexia All Be One, Urtet Remnant of Memnarch. Sigarda's Aid. Now, this is the copy from the Commander Legends Arm for Battle Commander deck. It goes up 259 this week to 1205. It is in Pioneer Boros Hammer Time, but it's also in the Modern Hammer Time deck, and that one has been really popular recently. Aside from that, you see this in Legacy Mono White Hammer Time, and it's in a variety of different commander builds, too. Next is the Chain Veil. This is the one from the list. It goes up 301 this week to 3234. This is in the very popular Pioneer Nykthos Ramp deck, but it also gets a lot of commander play. You see this in many Attracts of Praetor's Voice decks, and it's in builds around new cards from Phyrexia All B1-2, like Teku Thal Inquiry Dominus, for example. Also, this week we learned that Commander Masters is coming later this year, and one of the commander decks coming with that product is called Planeswalker Party. Does this get reprinted there? If it doesn't, could be a good upgrade. Next, we have another card from the list. It is Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. It goes up 331 this week to 3292. This is rebounding after some recent losses. In Pioneer and Modern, it's found in a few different control builds. As for Commander, you also see this in Attracts the Praetor's Voice and Grand Unifier decks. Mutavault, the Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate Commander copy, which was in the Party Time Commander deck. It goes up 456 this week to 1167. And the Magic 2014 copy is up 552 to 1398. This got a lot of play in the Pioneer decks in the Pro Tour Top 8 last weekend. It was in Rakdos Midrange, Mono White Humans, and the two-teamer Indomitable Creativity decks, including the first place one. You see this in a lot of other Pioneer builds too, and in Modern, it's in Merfolk and Humans decks. Legacy, it shows up in Merfolk and Slivers, and it's also in several Commander decks old and new. Harumonix the Rat King and Graz Unstoppable Juggernaut from Phyrexia All B1 typically run this card. It's also a good upgrade to the Rebellion Rising Commander deck and in fresh builds around Othari Sun's Glory from there. Colossus Hammer, the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Commander copy. You find that one in the Aura of Courage Commander deck. It goes up 221 to 496. And the Game Knights Free For All copy is up 610 to 808 this week. Like Sigarda's Aid, this is in Pioneer, Modern, and Legacy Hammer Time builds. Modern being the most popular right now, though. And it's also in many different Commander decks. World Spine Worm is next. It goes up 634 this week to 1636. This is in the Pioneer Teamer Indomitable Creativity builds, including the two copies that were in the top eight, one of them winning the Pro Tour, of course. There is also a five color version of that deck, which is basically the same thing, but it runs a copy of Atraxa Grand Unifier in the sideboard. Additionally, this does get some commander play, but again, Pioneer, specifically the Pro Tour last weekend, is the key driver here. Warren Clux Monstrous Raider from Keltheim back again up 663 to 7415. Remember though, this creature is one of the borderless concept Praetor cards that you can pull from Phyrexia All Be One set draft and collector boosters, but it is another card getting pushed by the mechanics in many of the cards in Phyrexia All Be One. It is good with or against many of these new cards. It is a highly played card in Commander, and many times you do see this as the Commander. Commonly it's found in Attracts of Praetor's Voice and Grand Unifier decks, but it's in some other new builds too like Azuri Stalker of Spheres, for example. Additionally, it is another good upgrade to Corrupting Influence, and in fresh builds run Excel and Vishgrass from there. All right, let me put on my shocked face. The last card in the section is Indomitable Creativity. It goes up 1529 this week to 3223. This is hot, of course, because of the two Pioneer Teamer Indomitable Creativity decks in the top eight last week in the Pro Tour. Again, one of them being the winning deck. It's been so long, I almost forgot how cards from winning Pro Tour decks can really take off. This one, though, is also an Is It in five color varieties of the deck, too. In modern, Indomitable Creativity builds are popular, and this gets a little commander play, but really, Pioneer is the key driver here again. 
And that brings us to the Modern Legal Spotlight, and we have quite a few cards in this section this week, so let's just jump into it. Jace the Mind Sculptor from World Wake, the original is up 207 to 4966 in Modern, this is in Azorius Control and more. Legacy, it's in Jeskai Control and more there. It's also getting a bump in Commander play now, though, too. You see this in many of Tracks of Praetor's voice builds, and it's in some builds around new cards from Phyrexia all be one, like Tekuthal Inquiry Dominus, for example. Thousand Year Elixir from Lorwyn. This goes up 216 to 1313. This is getting more commander play now in some builds around Urtet Remnant of Memnark. Next is Inexorable Tide. The Modern Masters 2015 copy is up 207 to 1752. The Scars of Meriden copy is up 222 to 1499. Here's another card moving due to the new and returning mechanics in Phyrexia All Be One. You also find this in Commander Tracks of Praetor's Voice and Grand Unifier builds. It's also in builds around other new cards too, like Missouri Stalker of Spheres, for example. This was also mentioned on that episode of the Command Zone podcast this week, discussing in fact. Earthquake, that portal second age copy is up 234 this week to 1049. It is rebounding after some recent losses. It does have unique art, and it is hard to find in high grade online. It is getting additional commander play now, too, around a Phyrexia All Be One card, Solfim Mayhem Dominus. Hand of the Praetor is up 235 this week to 1092, and this is moving because of the return of poison counters in Phyrexia All Be One. It's in Commander, Attracts the Praetor's Voice, and more. And it's a good upgrade to Corrupting Influence, plus it's in new builds around Ixel and Vishgrads from there. Flusterstorm, the Commander copy, goes up 238 this week to 4255. Storm strategies have been popular, and this is a highly played sideboard card in many builds in both Modern and Legacy. In Vintage, you see this in main decks as well as sideboards. And it's in a variety of Commander builds, too. Academy Ruins, this is the one from Time Spiral. It goes up 243 this week to 1815. You see this in Modern Mono Blue Tron, but it did get a bump in Commander play when the Brothers War came out. And now there are Phyrexia All Be One cards pushing this as well. For example, you see this in Commander Urtet Remnant and Memnarch builds. Cavern of Souls, the one from Modern Masters 2017. It goes up 273 this week to 6249. Popular card in many formats. In Modern, this is an Amulet Titan and much more. In Legacy, it's in those highly played initiative builds and more. Also, you see this in Vintage Initiative decks. As for Commander, yeah, you see this in Urtet Remnant of Memnarch builds too. Typically, you see this in the Ur Dragon builds in Commander and Sliver decks. We found out this week that the Ur Dragon is getting a reprint in the upcoming Commander Masters, and one of the Commander Masters Commander decks is called Sliver Swarm. Ink Moth Nexus from Meriden Besieged. It goes up 279 this week to 3895. This is another card in Modern Hammer Time, and it's in other builds there too. Legacy Infect uses this as well. Not surprisingly, this is also in Commander Attracts the Praetor's Voice decks, and it's in a lot of new builds around Phyrexia All Be One cards there, like Graz Unstoppable Juggernaut, for example. And you guessed it, it's another good upgrade to the Corrupting Influence Commander deck, and in new builds around Ixhel and Vishgraz from there. Contagion Engine, this is the one from the list that goes up 332 this week to 2154. Another card being pushed by Phyrexia All Be One. This is a solid commander card and combo enabler in several builds like Attracts of Praetor's Voice again. It's also showing up in a ton of new commander decks around cards from this new set, including Azuri Stalker of Spears again. Additionally, it's a good upgrade to, yep, say it with me now, Corrupting Influence, and it's in fresh builds around Ixel and Vishgraz. Doubling Season, the Battle Bond copy is up 224 this week to 9224, the Double Masters copy up 377 to 9754. Another huge commander card found in many builds like Attracts the Praetor's Voice, and it's also in builds around new cards including the popular Urtet Remnant of Memnarch. Overall, this is a card that plays well with the mechanics and many of the cards from Phyrexia All Be One. Plus, it was mentioned on that episode of the Command Zone podcast discussing Infect this week too. Mycosynth Golem, the one from 5th Dawn, goes up 378 this week to 4498. This took off with the release of the Brothers War, but now Phyrexia All Be One is pushing it too. It is in a number of new commander builds, including Urtet Remnant of Memnark. Maronar from Champions of Kamigawa, this goes up 642 this week to 2851. It is getting more commander play now around Karumonix the Rat King. Skitherix the Blight Dragon, still very hot. Double Masters up 427 this week to 4460. The Scars of Meriden copy up 432 to 4739. And the one from the list is up 678 to 4494. 
This gets some play as a commander, but it's also in the 99 of many decks, including Attracts the Praetor's Voice again. It is yet another good upgrade to Corrupting Influence, and commonly you see this in fresh builds around Ixel and Vushgraz. Plus it's in some commander builds around cards from the main set too. Paramonix the Rat King is one. And this was also mentioned in that episode of the Command Zone podcast this week about Infect. Elish Nor and Grand Cenobite, that original new Fire XA copy still moving up. It's up $879 this week to $52. This has been a popular commander, and it's in the 99 of many decks, including Attracts of Praetor's Voice and Grand Unifier. As you might have guessed, though, this is showing up in several new commander builds around cards from Phyrexia all be one. Elish Nor and Mother of Machines is just one example. And yes, this is another good upgrade to Corrupting Influence and a new builds around Ixel and Vizgraz. And the last card in this section is Mirror Matrix. It goes up 968 this week to 39.99. Solid Mirror support card moving because of the return of Mirror. You see this in Urtet Remnant of Memnarch builds now in Commander. And it is time for everybody's favorite section of the video. The Eternal Spotlight, which of course is a salute to all Eternal formats, but mostly Commander. Now obviously not every card in this section is going to be legal in every Eternal format. But none of these cards are legal in Standard, Pioneer, or Modern. Leeches, it makes a return. It's up $2 to $24.91. Now, this reserve list Homelands card has been hot ever since we started learning about Phyrexia all be one It has been moving in response to the return of Poison Counters, of course, in the main set, as well as their presence in Corrupting Influence. This probably really isn't the best defense against Poison Counters, but many have specced on this card, and you do see it occasionally appear in a Commander deck list here or there like attracts the Praetor's voice. Alibu, Ancient Witness. Now this is the foil copy. There's also an extended art copy. This one's going up 210 this week to 350. It's getting more commander play now in Urtet Remnant of Memnarch builds. Flawless Maneuver. This is the new printing from the Rebellion Rising commander deck. It's up 211 this week to $15. Of course, it's in fresh commander builds around Nayali, Sons of Vanguard, and Othari, Sons Glory from there. It's also in several decks around cards from the main set, though, too, including Elish Norn Mother of Machines. Virtue's Ruin from Portal is up 217 this week to 1507. There is a From the Vault Annihilation copy of this card that really hasn't moved much yet, but many players do not like the From the Vault foiling. The reason this has been hot, though, is because it has been appearing in Legacy and Vintage sideboards to deal with initiative builds, which have been performing well recently in both formats. Necromancy, this is the one from the list. It goes up 224 this week to 1692. This copy is a little dry online this week. It appears in several commander builds, but the card is being pushed now by everybody's favorite new reanimation target, Attracts a Grand Unifier. This one might be moving more because of spec than gameplay, but something to keep an eye on. Razor Claw Bear, this goes up 233 this week to $60.20. It is rebounding after a loss last week. It's yet to be reprinted, and you do see this in some Aula Queen Among Bears commander builds. Show and Tell from Conspiracy Take the Crown. This goes up 259 this week to 2498. You do see this in Legacy Sneak and Show and More, but the reason it's as hot as it is right now is again because of Atraxa Grand Unifier. There is a Sneak and Show build using Atraxa in Legacy now. We'll have to see if that sticks around the meta. This also does get a little commander play too. Reign of Daggers up 261 to 29.99. This is rebounding after some recent losses. The card doesn't see much play to speak of, but it is an older card yet to be reprinted and hard to find in high grade. Dance of the Dead up 262 to 13.92. This is another older card yet to be reprinted. You do see this one in a number of commander builds though, but it is another card moving because of attracts a grand unifier. Right now though, again, this is more due to spec than gameplay. Reanimate from Tempest up 299 to 1948. Now this is found in Legacy Reanimator decks with Attracts the Grand Unifier. This is also in Oops All Spells there, and it's in a lot of different commander decks too. Ancient Tomb from Ultimate Masters goes up 310 this week to 8604. This is a big mana base card in Legacy and Vintage, and it's found in the Mono White Initiative decks in both of those builds. Also, it's in Legacy Painter, which is very popular. Plus, it's in a lot of commander decks, including Attracts the Praetor's Voice and the new Elish Norn Mother Machines builds. Wheel of Fortune from Revised, up 312 this week to 32403. Solid commander card in a variety of builds, and it is seeing more play now around some new cards, including Solfim Mayhem Dominus. By the way, fun fact, the Wheel of Fortune Judge Foil card 
Still real expensive. It went up $12 this week to $1,934.97. Tropical Island from Revised. This is up $3.20 to $508.39. Not a big percentage increase here, but I think it's worth discussing because overall, these Revised Dual Lands have stabilized and in some cases have been moving up since the drop that occurred following the Magic 30th Anniversary Edition announcement. Of course, when it comes to gameplay, they're all highly played in any format where they're legal. Oran Frostfang. Now, this is the one from Commander 2019 this time. It goes up $321 to $27. Good upgrade to the Corrupting Influence Commander deck, and it's in fresh builds around Vishgraz and Ixhel. This was also mentioned on that episode of the Command Zone podcast this week about Infect. Mox Opal from Double Masters. This goes up $365 this week to $8401. This is in Legacy Painter and more Vintage. You see this in Paradoxical Outcome, and it is a very popular Commander card. It's getting play in new builds too, like Urted, Remnant, and Memnarch. Here's another revised dual land. This time we have Badlands. It goes up 413 this week to 413.38. Pearl Medallion. This time the Tempest copy is going up 466 to $40.13. Last week we saw the Commander 2014 copy spike. Like I predicted last week, that one is retracting some, but this one is jumping. It is found in many Mono White Commander builds, and it's in some new ones too, around Phyrexia all be one cards like Elish Norn Mother of Machines, for example. Organic Extinction. This is from the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Buckle Up Commander deck. It goes up 485 this week to 695. This does get a good amount of play in various Commander builds, but it is seeing a big increase in play now in a lot of different new Commander decks, including Urtet Remnant of Memnarch. Gaia's Cradle from Urza Saga goes up 494 this week to 899.34. Small percentage increase here, but it continues to rebound after some losses in 2022. You see this in Legacy Elves and more. Vintage, it's in Hogak Vine. It's also in a variety of Commander decks. Phyrexian Dreadnought from Mirage goes up 539 this week to 98.76. This is in Legacy Stifle Knot, but it's also in a new anti-initiative deck in Legacy that runs four copies of Torpor Orb in the main. We'll have to see if that catches on. Additionally, though, this does see Commander play around a Phyrexia all be one card, so Pandral Hunger Dominus. And this does get played in the pre-modern format, and that format has been moving card prices more recently. One more revised dual land with Taiga. This goes up 595 this week to 391.99. City of Traders is up 1991 to 348.50. This is rebounding after some recent losses. Gets a lot of legacy play in several decks, including the popular Mono White Initiative builds again. It's also in a number of Commander decks. And finally, our last card today is Sliver Queen. This goes up 4791 to $308.50, rebounding in a big way after being soft for a while. It is a good Sliver Commander. It's in the 99 of Sliver builds too. Of course, the reason this is hot right now is because of the upcoming Commander Masters Sliver Swarm Commander deck. I think there's an important lesson here that yes, when Wizards prints lots of cards, they reprint a lot of things and many of them go down in value. However, if you're looking in the right direction at the right time, there's cases like this where the reprintings actually cause other cards to go up in value. And they're not necessarily always reserve list cards either. We've seen that with Master sets time and time again over the years. And we're going to keep seeing it, probably even more so in the future. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Now, if you want to find out which cards are moving down in value this week, I did put out a series of shorts throughout the weekend. That information is there. Until next time, though, hey, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.